Greetings from Ponzi. Welcome back to the channel, guys. If you haven't noticed by now, this seems like a massive, massive Ponzi scheme, but we're all here for the gains at the end of the day. Because at the end of the day, we want to rise to the top of the pyramid, take those gains. I don't know what, what we're going to do with them. What are you going to do with the gains? Let us know in the comments down below. Today's video, I want to go back and cover some of these cryptocurrencies we have looked at over the months and update Bitcoin, Ethereum, and the graph, which I looked at yesterday. It started moving just after yesterday's video. There's no way in hell I can move a $2 billion market cap uh, cryptocurrency. So we're going to dive into that. Uh, I want to start to clear off some of these cryptos. We've looked at quite a lot. Obviously, we can't hold every single cryptocurrency. And uh, the idea here is to look at some of the charts and then identify ones that we can start to just move to the side for now. I don't hate anything before you get in the comments and discuss certain things. Just relax. It's all good. If you like relaxed videos, hopium free, let me know. Hit the like button down below, bell notification icon, subscribe to the channel. Let's push it to 110,000. We just crossed 102,000 uh, yesterday. So yesterday's video, April altcoin gems. I've listed seven in this video to have a look at. The graph was one of them. GODB was another. That was a uh, ultra small cap cryptocurrency sitting somewhere around 25 million at the time. I think it's jumped to about 30 or 35. Like I said, I see, I find these things, I like them. If I talk about them, the small stuff has the potential to move. So just be very careful with those small cryptocurrencies. Uh, the graph, something that I can't move. Let's have a look at the trends. And I'm, I'm just focusing on two at the moment, Cardano, NFT, the main things that people have been searching for. Cardano down, probably uh, looks like a good time that we get some accumulation on Cardano. NFTs still raging, absolutely raging. Uh, fear and greed index, this has started to creep up. If you've noticed over the last uh, couple of weeks, you know, every video at the beginning, we just look at the fear and greed index and it has begun to claw its way back up from its depths of 56 and we're getting into that greedy territory again. Not at extreme greed, but just greed. Next thing uh, we've had a look at recently, uh, regularly, is coin market cow. I'm bringing this one up because uh, just a reminder, GODB is having its token burn today, uh, just here, 29th of March, and another coin which I have been following for a long time, Horizon Sushi Swap listing. Won't go on about that one too much. We'll look at Zen uh, in future videos, but I just like to bring it up because it, it is one of those ones that's dear to my heart. It is one of the ones that I did marry through 2017 into this current bull market. Let's have a look at a quick bit of news and then hit the charts. The Fed plans to unveil digital dollar prototypes in July. So let's just be aware of that. If this comes up, I, look, at the end of the day, macro view on cryptocurrency, I'm bullish Bitcoin, bullish Ethereum, bullish cryptocurrency in general. There is gonna be ups and downs. If I see this come out in July, they've got some sort of digital dollar and the market starts to have a bit of a freak out, a bit of a panic attack from this, then overall, I know that uh, you know this has already been planned. It's in the works. The Fed plans to unveil a digital dollar. Why do I think this would be a bit of a problem in the market? Maybe some people will see it as the death again to Bitcoin. You know, why do we need another currency, which you know Bitcoin is a store of value? Uh, when the Fed is going to create its own dollar. And I assume there'll be a lot of scare tactics coming around at that time as well. If countries are bringing in their own digital currencies, their own cryptocurrencies, then that's probably going to bring some fear to the, uh, the decentralized cryptocurrencies. Just something to keep in mind. That's the way I look at these things. Other news, boomers next to adopt crypto. A trillion dollars could flow into Bitcoin over the next year, says Novogratz. Now, I don't doubt that we'll see a lot of money, whether it's a trillion dollars like of cash, pretty much cold hard money, whether it's uh, numbers in another system coming into this system, m maybe. I don't know when he's saying that. It's just saying over the next year. I don't see a trillion dollars because the, the reason is there's not that there is a trillion dollar market cap. Like we've got a $1.7 trillion market cap now. There's not actually $1.7 trillion dollars in this Ponzi scheme. There could be some estimates say 1 25th is the actual money that's in cryptocurrency. It could be a hell of a lot less. It could be 1 100th. And because of the supply shortages in many of these cryptocurrencies in their tokenomics, that causes the, the, the market caps, the prices to be 
escalated to be very high compared to what actual money is in there. We've talked about this many times on the channel before, looking deeper into market caps. And so if you don't understand that, essentially you could have one Ethereum on the open market. There could be a thousand Ethereum stored in a wallet somewhere which are not being moved. You have one Ethereum, you have 10 people betting on it. They all want a piece of Ethereum and then they just spike the price out of to nowhere man's land, to the moon, essentially. And so that is what happens when it comes to the market caps. You could have a small bit of money that pushes these market caps far beyond what their actual use case valuation should be. Okay, so let's move on from that one. I'm just looking at trillion dollars could flow in. I think there definitely could be a lot of money flowing in. The points he's making here is money will start to come in early next month. So this is written today. So this is a March article I saw four hours ago. Uh, next month, so that's April. And then further down, JP, JMP Securities predicted that about 1.5 trillion could flow into Bitcoin from wealthy clients of investment banks. The firm based its projections on a modest portfolio allocation, citing that around $30 trillion of assets in the US retail wealth management industry currently do not have direct access to Bitcoin. If we saw 30 trillion come in, then you could expect the market cap to multiply by far more than $30 trillion. So we're currently at 1.7, call it two. That's a 15 times return. If 30 trillion actually came in, it would be far, far, far more than the 15 times return to that point or you know, a little more. Basically, with the bigger funds, you they need to come in slowly. So it needs to be chunks of money in, you get that flow in and out. It starts to stabilize the overall market. We won't see big rises and big falls because uh, if the market cap of bitcoin is gets to 10 trillion or 20 trillion dollar market cap then of course 1 trillion dollars coming in isn't going to have the same effect as it would if bitcoin was what it currently is now which is 1 trillion dollar market cap so if a trillion dollars came in now that would really skyrocket the price but if a trillion dollars came into bitcoin when it was a 20 trillion dollar market cap it won't have the same sort of effect. So they've got to come in slowly into the market. And that is our advantage as smaller players. We can afford to come in early, but we're taking the risk betting on the f betting on what we believe to be the next marketplace. And of course, decentralized cryptocurrencies is what I believe and I assume you guys watching believe to be another area or well, the up and coming area or area of investment. I'll finish that sentence. That's all positive news, all great stuff, but it doesn't happen overnight. And I look, Novogratz is saying this year, next year, next month, he'd been talking about this. If you're new to the, the, the space, Novogratz has been talking up Bitcoin all through 2018, 19 and 20, 2020. So you can get carried away and think that this should happen tomorrow or next month, like he's saying here. But he has a huge position in his company here, Galaxy Digital CEO. There you go. And so he can talk about this stuff and hold a massive position and hold this for years. If you're expecting this next month, I highly doubt you're going to see trillion dollars of cold hard cash come in in one month. Nothing's out of the question, but I would not be betting on that. Uh, here's a little bit of news of blockchain going into the real world. New York's blockchain based COVID-19 passport is now live. Uh, if you are one for human rights, forcing people uh, vaccines and then splitting populations. This is all sort of negative stuff here. But blockchain is now being used for good or for evil, whichever the way you want to look at this one. A little bit of stimulus news. 1.9 trillion won't reignite the world economy. Important to note, we're in cryptocurrency. It's always looking at, uh, people are looking at this stimulus pack to go into Bitcoin, you know, one tenth of it, 10% of the stimulus to boost these prices. Look, it possibly could happen and probably will happen. There will be some of the stimulus money, of course, go into cryptocurrencies. Looking at this long term, a lot of money being printed. We all get this. We know that there is a lot of money being printed. This is the amount in a percentage terms of the GDP. Fis fiscal support announced since December, call that 5% to 13%. So it's 8% of the GDP of the US is going to be printed or the support uh, since December. That's what's been announced. Cumulative fiscal support as of December, 5% of the GDP. So the US is at around 13% now of their GDP just being printed uh, up until this point, or at least some of it has been announced. We're not getting out of debt. This is the plan. The plan is debt. We stay in debt. We keep rising and falling with the tides. 
like the cycles, like the seasons, like everything will come around again. We'll get a massive, massive boom. Land prices, which you know I talk about on the channel. Just did a recent video, a couple of videos back with Kathy from Property Share Market Economics. Check that out four days ago. We are booming into 2026 for the land prices. Stocks will probably go up there as well. Crypto has a slightly different cycle. It's still a new uh, asset class, but that is going to be where a lot of this money is going. Stocks, land, when I can find cryptos on that as well, that's what we're going to get into. That's why I talk about some of the cryptocurrencies like labs. Let's have a look at some of these uh, cryptos which I've seen moving pretty hard and the ones that you guys have mentioned in the comments. So we'll take a quick look at these. Solana at $18. This is the first time I believe I've talked about this one on the channel. It is a favorite of many of my friends and so I'm sure they'll be happy that I'm looking at it here. There's no way I can move a $5 billion market cap. What I do like about it is the fully diluted market cap isn't too far away. I mean, a lot of the coins are out there. It's not 100% uh, out there on the market, but uh, over 50%. So that's a good looking piece there. Just broke into new all time highs. So I'm going to keep Solana on the list. But of course, I want to be cutting out some of the cryptocurrencies as well. Badger, you guys were asking me about Badger. Yes, the price is falling. You want to get into these when the price is low. So the price is lower. I haven't seen a turnaround yet. I don't see a signal to buy in just yet, but the price is still going down. No dramas. $300 million market cap. That's about, uh, what's that quick numbers? About 30% or a bit over, maybe 35% of the market cap uh, that's out there on the market and they still have a lot locked up. So Badger is still on the list. Have not seen a turnaround just yet. Vesper is another one you guys have talked about. I'm not adding this one to the list just yet. It seems like it's a great project. A lot of people have been talking about it. At the moment, the market cap is 137 million. So it's nice and low at this point. And again, let's look rough numbers. It's just under 25% out there on the markets. So just another one to bring to the table. Let me know in the comments down below which ones you guys are liking the look of and which ones you have invested in. Vesper is a DeFi ecosystem and growth engine for your crypto assets, yield generating products, focus on accessibility, optimization, and longevity. Looks like another one of these projects where you can earn some interest, but it is a DeFi project, which is a good sign. FTX token, looking good. It has come down a little bit off those highs. This is a big project, which I do like the look of. It is another exchange for the, the US guys. I'm not sure whether they are so familiar with it. So these guys have gone basically 10 times. It was about $2.50 to $3, currently sitting at $3.60. Big project supported by Binance does really great work, the CEO here. So keep that one in mind. Let's move on to Graph, which had a pump yesterday. That's looking pretty good to me. We had a little low of around $1.30. And just in the last couple of days, now we hit $1.80. Graph on BTC and on USDT, $1.75 at the moment. That yesterday was the move that broke through these highs. So that is what we want to see. We want to see some high volume Remember we had this purple box here as a nice area of accumulation. We've only just touched into this box and we got a, a small breakout. So that is the first sign. A retest would be a great sign and a hold. Otherwise, what can happen, especially when these cryptocurrencies aren't uh, through all of their accumulation, so enough of the crypto being bought up, you can see them fall and then come back into the accumulation area. That's why I've got this box highlighted here. I don't expect it to go to the bottom of the accumulation, but it's something I've got my eye on, somewhere around sort of that dollar level, maybe a touch lower just to test it because we've got a little high back here, some swing lows. That's why I like the look of that area. I think we will probably test this low again. Just doesn't seem like this is the breakout yet. Could be wrong. That's why I want to see a retest of around a dollar fifty or a dollar sixty and then start to move up. And then for me, that is a pretty good signal to be loading up on GRT. Not financial advice, not telling anyone to go out and buy this thing just based on uh, some quick technical analysis looking at this chart. Let's have a look at GRT BTC just to see whether we've got some sort of bottoming pattern as well. This is looking pretty good too. This is the difference about buying cryptos at their peaks when everyone is raving on about them. So this is back in mid-February that GRT hit its top. And so if we were buying in that last bar where everyone is talking about it online on Twitter, YouTube, wherever the hell it is you watch these things, where we're currently at now, you would have lost almost 50% of your Bitcoin value from buying that high. Say you purchase 
an, uh, G, uh, GRT one whole Bitcoin's worth at the top at 6,000 Satoshis. It's currently at around 3,000 Satoshis, 3,100. So you lost almost 50% of your Bitcoin. That's why it's better, in my opinion, to just wait these areas out. You don't need to buy every single one of these dips. We can wait to see a little bit of a turnaround, some sort of reversal signal, and then buy on the retest. Because after these get absolutely annihilated, that's generally when uh, there's less buyers around. And that's when you want to be getting in. You want to be buying in a buyer's market, not in a seller's market. Let's have a look at Bitcoin because we looked at this yesterday. My targets, the areas that I was still looking at were around the 52,000 retest. We were, let me move this across. Remember we looked at the 50% levels. We've hit the 52. I, we need to get above this level of around 58,000. You can see all the closes up here. You can see the tops. That is the area that is pushing the market down. And currently, even though we have bounced off this low at 50, this isn't looking like the strongest test. So I gotta wait. We wanna see it break the 56 and a half, 56, seven, and then come back and test 58. If we can do that, we're in a good position. It's not that much to wait. It sounds like it in dollar terms, but in percentage terms, you only gotta wait 6%, 6 to get a better confirmation where we currently are because what could happen is we come up to test again and then start to fall back down. And I've got a few little areas that I'm watching here with our fibs. There's my next 50%, it's 45. Obviously, we've got to get through 50 first, 50%, oh, sorry, 50,000, and then move its way back down. So Bitcoin still on track for a little bit of a consolidation in these levels between 40 and 60,000. Great news for us looking for an altcoin season. So don't worry too much. It's still bullish long term. Short term, looking good also. Good entries. If it comes back down to those areas, beautiful buying. Ethereum is the last one. That's what we talked about yesterday. ETH USD, 1700. It's an accumulation area. Everyone's always wondering when should I be buying? Most people are buying when this thing pumps and it pumps again. And then everyone's excited at the tops, buying in at these tops. But now when there's not good news about it, Ethereum can't scale, Ethereum is, is gonna lose out to Cardano, you, you know all the narratives. This is a time to be buying. So I've got some increased volume lows, not saying they're gonna hold, but anywhere between this sort of 1700 and uh, I, don't even, I don't think we'll get back down to these dips here. I think we'll probably get as low as sort of 1450, 1500. That sort of range is high on my list to continue stacking into ETH. Any of these projects that we're making gains on in the uh, other altcoins or fresh money coming in, if you've got a pretty high paying job, want something safe, Ethereum is my bet. You know that because you see it on my Instagram where I post my retirement fund almost every single day, which is what I'm gonna do straight after this video. So go follow me on Instagram. This is the update on Ethereum. It's still looking good. You know we did a full analysis of the time frames on uh, Ethereum and the breakouts and everything like that on yesterday's video. So go and check that out. Follow me on Instagram. Twitter is active again. So yeah, go and follow me over there. Ask your questions. I'll get your answers over there. Like the video if you found some value from it. Subscribe to the channel. Let us get us to 110,000. Your chance to win one of three free 12 month membership courses to the trading education where we're looking at investing, cycling those profits into other assets and cryptocurrency. So the Investor Accelerator 100,000 subscriber giveaway, go click that link down below and I will see you now at the next video. Peace out.